Over 42 million Americans struggle with hunger growing up, and our next guest was one of those people. Now she runs the largest food bank in the country. So joining us now with her story is Deborah Vizzi, CEO of the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Deborah, thank you so much for sitting down with us oh, today. Oh, my pleasure. Great to be here. Okay, as I mentioned a little bit, I mean, you grew up in the foster care system. Did. How did that impact your outlook and the trajectory of where you are now? Mm, it had an amazing impact on my life. Clearly, as a foster child, um, I experienced lots of things, some good, some bad. But mostly, I was a hungry kid during difficult times in an early, early age. So it really provided me with a very different outlook on how I not only run my li own life, but how I lead the largest food bank in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a child, I didn't have a voice. And using it now, using these experiences of being a hungry child to now feed millions of people is an incredible you know, legacy to have, and we do so much for so many. And what were some of the challenges you felt like you faced getting to where you are right now, especially in your career? Well, I think, you know, early on, you know, in my career, it certainly didn't seem like it would be appropriate to share my personal narrative. However, it's been one of the most incredible gifts. And, why, and just piggyback on that, why did you feel that way? Well, you know, as somebody who was both sexually and physically abused as a child, in and out of foster care, it's not something that you usually bring to a business setting sure. to talk about. Um, however, it's been the catalyst for being useful. You know, it's something that's so sad and difficult now inspires and motivates so many. Mm -hmm. So people come to the food bank and they know that I was hungry. They know what it feels like, really right, absolutely. They, I absolutely know what it feels like to be on a pantry line and to be getting food in a soup kitchen. So being able to use my voice now, right. when early on that was really silenced in many ways, has been incredibly useful and not only, and not, and not only useful but impactful um, to all of the folks that we serve. And Deborah, what kind of advice would you give to someone who maybe was in a similar situation that you were in? Well, I think that when you grow up in the type of environment that I did, um, all of the skills for good business are really start there. You persevere, you move forward, you're driven, you're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. You're not uh, necessarily over emotionalizing things, you're just moving forward. Those are skills that a lot of people are trying to learn in business school. Right. And you're already coming out of the box with all of those things. And also, Spending ch time as a child always visioning something better really is an amazing backdrop for what it's like to be a CEO mm -hmm. because you have to be ahead of the curve. You have to envision your life differently in these circumstances, but then envision a company and where you can take it. And being a CEO, you have to know what's around the corner before right. anybody actually right. sees it. Well, you so, have it's such an inspirational story, and I'm sure so many people are watching us and, and might have gone through similar situations as, as you have gone through as well. So what advice do you have for people out there that are looking to you? I mean, like, she's made it. Look how great she's done it. What are the tricks? Well, I don't think it's a trick. I think it's a matter of really being disciplined around your education, not giving up continuing to find folks to help you along the way. I had a lot of, one, you know, I always say one capable adult can really help mm -hmm. the next, you know, so pass it along, pay it forward, but certainly stay very focused on your vision for yourself. And I think that that will transform, that level of genuineness as a leader gets transformed in anything you do. Um, so I think those are key things to continue in a path for success for anybody let alone somebody who had a, a life like mine. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about corporate giving, which has become you know, increasingly more popular, especially around the holidays and its core to companies' culture. What are the most impactful ways you see companies really can give back, especially during the holidays, and maybe what are companies doing wrong? Mm. Well, I think the first thing they could do is obviously give of their time. I mean, the food bank has 60,000 plus volunteers a year. Wow. So companies should come out and do as much as they can. Right. I think what people do wrong is they often give not understanding the recipient's needs. I often talk about when I was a young child, I got a turkey as a donation, and I was living in a shelter where I couldn't cook it. Mm -hmm. You know, so although it makes us feel good to give a meal, it right. may not be practical. the best thing and practical for everybody right. else. So I think being mindful of that, and that's difficult to do when you're not someone who 
doesn't have a place, you know. Or, right. You know. And we've interviewed so many people that work at for-profit businesses, but obviously how things work and are structured at a non-for-profit are so different. What are some of the things that you have learned that are different for, that working for a non-profit as opposed to a for-profit business? Well, I think they're they're not so dissimilar, but the big issue that's different is obviously we're working for a humanitarian mission. Um, and that is paramount in all we do. So sometimes it doesn't make business sense. Mm -hmm. You may be actually losing money doing something, but we may continue to do it because it's, it's part of our mission and important. Um, so, you know, we put out this past year in total, our state, about 60 million pounds of food, wow. um, which is a record number for our food bank. Congratulations. Thank That's you. Amazing. So, you know, just getting that food out doesn't always make a lot of financial sense, but the need is there. It's part of our mission, and we have to do it. Mm -hmm. And Deborah, before we let you go, we've got to get your input on some of these top tips for business leaders and founders. Okay. Uh, <laughs> these top tips for business leaders and founders. Well, I think, you know, my personal mantra is that you resemble who you assemble. And having the right team to do all the right things for you generally will go a very long way. That's a great tip. Great advice. We love it. Deborah mm -hmm. Vizzi, she's the CEO over at the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Have a oh, great thank holiday. Thank you. Thank you. You too.